right, so I made it to the halfway point. Chapter 14. <clears throat> We're going to continue with Paul and Barnabas. So I guess that chapter 13 kind of began the journeys of Paul and Barnabas because that's what we're going to be going over in chapter 14 as well. Chapter 13, at the beginning of it, you know, um, God basically wanted to separate Paul and Barnabas from the others uh, to go on their own journey, basically. And They met that Bar-Jesus guy um, who was an un... Um, he was blinded. And then they went on to preach at the synagogues, and they're basically kicked out of the town. And so, let's continue with Paul and Barnabas at Iconium. Acts 14, verse 1, And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them. They were aware of it, and fled unto Lystra, and Derby cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about, and there they preached the gospel. Um, <clears throat> and so... Basically, they were going to be stoned, like going to be stoned or something. So they basically fled to the areas around, and uh, so they preached in the synagogues again. Uh, many people saved, but also the unbelieving Jews wanted to persecute them. Paul and Barnabas at Lystra or Lystra, Lystra, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped up and walked. Something similar that we read, I think, with Peter before. Now Paul, performing these miracles, and it said before that they were doing signs and wonders, so they are performing miracles. We're talking about a specific one now. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. They called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priests of Jupiter, which was before the city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people. Which when the, possible, the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, "Sirs, why do ye these things? We are also are like men of we are all, we also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. They are refusing to be worshipped, and um, we read what." what happened to Herod before when he accepted, you know, the worship that that is only due God and uh he was he immediately died, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these things with these things scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. So, these people were like pagans, and they worshipped pagan gods, basically, and they, they thought that Paul and Barnabas were gods. And uh, I think they were saying, you know, don't you get, you know, what we've been preaching, that Jesus is Lord, and, um, you know, all, all the glory is due to him, and... Um, they were going to offer these sacrifices to Paul and Barnabas, and uh, they got them to stop from doing that. And now we we'll read about Paul stoned at Lystra. Lystra. 
And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Scary. Okay. Maybe not so scary, because yeah, if Paul would go to heaven, he's a believer, but still, I mean, painful. Uh, so they, they stoned him. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. So they thought he was dead, like Stephen. Stephen was stoned to death. And now Paul experiences what Stephen experienced, except for Paul wasn't killed. It's kind of ironic, isn't it, how uh, he was there before. So, <clears throat> and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained the elders in every church and had prayed with fasting and commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Okay. So the, the church is just growing and growing, you know, they, they go, they return to places that they left, that they were kicked out of, or whatever. You know, they didn't care, they went back in, preached more, got more people saved. Paul and Barnabas returned to Antioch in Syria. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Atelia and then sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come, and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. They stayed in Antioch, in Syria, a long time. So this talks about a lot of their travels, and, you know, there's a lot of places mentioned that I have no idea how to pronounce, and I don't know where they all are ge geographically, but, you know, I don't think that's necessarily the important things to take away from this. Um, but uh, just despite the persecution, they continued onward. They continued preaching and, and doing miracles, and um, Paul was doing miracles, and Paul was persecuted, and... You know, they were setting up elders in these churches. They were, you know, making really strong foundations for these groups of Christians. And so, uh, that's uh, halfway through Acts chapter 14. So, uh, Paul's journey wasn't over yet. And, uh, Let's continue on to chapter 15. God bless.